Thank you for joining me today for this presentation. The replacement with partial absorption of local Neanderthals by Homo sapiens of African origin is one of the major events in the course of human evolution. In Europe, between 45 and 40,000 CalBP, a variety of short-lived lithic assemblages are represented between the end of the local Middle Paleolithic and the oldest forms of the origination. Unfortunately, they only yielded an handful of human fossils, and in most cases, it is difficult to assign these so-called transitional assemblages to biological groups. Radiocarbon chronology is critical to decipher the transition period. This period is at the limit of application of the radiocarbon method, and in this time range, contamination can be a major issue. Practically, this means that only dates published since the techniques of sample pretreatment were improved can be taken at face value. Moreover, the new radiocarbon calibration curve in Cal20 published last summer showed that radiocarbon dates produced for this time range are seriously affected by an excess of radiocarbon in the atmosphere. Between 48 and 40,000 CalBP, the radiocarbon clock runs almost twice as fast as it should. The duration of the transitional period was in fact shorter than what the radiocarbon chronology says. All the dates given in this talk are based on the new INCAL-20 calibration curve. In Western Europe, the latest Neanderthals were assigned to Chateaubriand layers in two sites, Saint-Césaire and Grotte Durand in France. Chateaubriand is a very upper poetic looking industry from central France and northern Spain. Its features include the systematic production of blades and bladlets, bone industry, and pendants made of pierced or grooved mammal teeth. Both in Grotte du Rhin and in Saint Césaire, the integrity of the assemblages and the association between the Neanderthal remains and the Chateaubriand artifacts has been questioned. However, in both sites, the Neanderthals are directly dated around 41,000 CalBP, right in the middle of the known range of dates for the Chateaubriand assemblages between 44 and 39,000 CalBP. Therefore, there is little doubt that, Neander that Neanderthals were around when the Chateaubriand was produced. What about the oldest occurrence of modern Homo sapiens in Europe? There are claims for early occurrences beyond 42,000 CalBP in Kent's Cavern, UK, possibly in association with a Lincombian assemblage, and in Grotta del Cavallo, Italy, in association with another traditional assemblage, the Uludian. However, in both cases, no direct dates of the human remains were provided, but only modeled dates for their assumed stratigraphic context. And the possibility to safely determine this context for excavation conducted in the 20s or in the 60s has been challenged by some scholars. The situation is different with the femur from Ustishim in Western Siberia. This specimen was collected on the banks of the river Irtish, above 57 degrees northern latitude. It is morphologically and genetically indisputably modern and could be directly dated to an interval now estimated between 46 and 43,000 CalBP. Unfortunately, it was found out of any archaeological context. In the paper describing the specimen, we however suggested that it could be associated with the Asian variant of what we call initial Upper Paleolithic, documented at sites such as Karabom in the Altai Mountains at about 45,000 CalBP. The concept of initial Upper Paleolithic, IUP, is different from that of transitional industry, although it covers a range of assemblages falling chronologically between the last middle paleolithic assemblages and the first bloodlet industries of the upper paleolithic. IUP assemblages are known from Southwest Asia into Eastern Europe and as far east as Mongolia. They combine elements of Levallois method, 
with features more typical of upper periodic blade technologies to produce large blanks. IUP has been sometimes considered the marker of an early dispersion of Homo sapiens in the mid latitude of a region. However, human remains associated with IUP are fragmentary and very scarce. The site of Bachokiro in Bulgaria is one of the very few sites where such fragments were found. The interpretation was ambiguous and they were eventually lost, but their occurrence in a well stratified site triggered our interest for that cave. The site is located about 70 kilometers south of the Danube River. It was excavated by Ms. Garod in 1938 and more extensively by Ginter and Koslovsky between 1971 and 1975. Starting in 2015, our study of the site showed that in situ sediments were still in place. In two sectors of the cave, we could find the layers yielding the pre origination assemblage that had been assigned to, by the previous excavators to a so called Bachokirian industry. It is mostly present in a dark layer, layer I, very rich in archaeological material and covered by sterile deposits but it is also present in the top of the underlying archaeologically less dense J layer. This assemblage clearly belongs to the IUP ensemble and the lithic material recovered by our excavation is presented in a separate talk of this meeting by Dr. Tsenka Tsanova. One striking aspect of the IUP in Bachukiro cave is the richness of its bone industry. Bone artifacts include points and lissoirs, but also numerous pendants essentially manufactured from cave bearties. Our study of the site also produced a large number of radiocarbon dates that were presented at the Liege Ishi meeting by Helen Fulas. At Bachokiro Cave, the IUP from layer I and top of layer J covers a range between 46 and 43,300 cal BP. Our excavation also yielded several human remains, five of them directly associated to the IUP assemblage. One is a lower second molar found at the top of layer J. Four bone fragments from layer I were identified as human after screening more than 1,200 fragments using collagen peptide mass fingerprinting. These four fragments were then directly dates, dated. They cover a range from about 46 to 43,000 cal BP. The lower second molar displays a four cusp configuration absent in Neanderthals, but also a middle trigonid crest present in only 10% of humans today. Its pulp chamber does not display the hypertorodont condition observed in Neanderthals and the geometric morphometric analysis of the enamel dentin junction also clearly assigned the specimen to Homo sapiens. Mitochondrial DNA was extracted from the five IUP human specimens from Bachokiro Cave. Using 10 directly dated ancient Homo sapiens as calibration points, we obtained genetic data for these five specimens in re remarkably good agreement with our calibrated radiocarbon ages. The human mitochondrial DNA sequences found in layer I fall close to the base of each of the three major macro acro groups of present day non Africans, M, N, and R. Macro acro group M is not present in Europe today. And from a phylogenetic point of view, results on the mitochondrial DNA and ongoing research on nuclear DNA indicate IUP individuals from Bachokiro Cave have no relation with later upper poetic populations of Europe. The Bachokiro evidence has important implications. It confirms that IUP was produced by modern Homo sapiens, at least in this part of Eurasia. Modern Homo sapiens were present in the Balkans before 45,000 cal BP. And if one takes into account the duration of the Chateaubriand, their arrival may precede the extinction of the last Western European Neanderthals by at least 6,000 years. 
If confirmed, this long chronological overlap implies multiple possibilities in of interaction between the two groups, even if local coexistence might have been ephemeral. In this perspective, the striking similarities between the IUP pendants of Bachokiro Cave and those produced a couple of centuries later by the Chateaubriand makers suggest that biological interaction were most likely accompanied by cultural diffusion, something not very surprising after all. Finally, we see that the peopling of Western Eurasia by modern Homo sapiens and the subsequent replacement of local Neanderthals was a long and complex process involving at least two distinct waves of peopling at the beginning of the Upper Paleolithic. To finish, I would like to express uh, my acknowledgments to the Bachokiro Cave team, the excavators, the colleagues from many institutions who participated in the study, but I would like to express a special thank you to Helen Fulas, who helped me a lot for the preparation of this presentation regarding cal calibration issues. Thank you for your attention.